Kent E. Nielsen here, and I am delighted to have you with me. Christ came into the world to do the will of his Father, and he prepared a way for you to do likewise. Join me to put him first in your life, receive the fruits of godliness, and realize your divine mission to be like him. You were born and commanded to do greater works than he did. Now let's go to work. Hello and welcome to Jesus is the Mark. I'm grateful to have you here. I'm going to be reading from the post 30, My Plan Gone Awry. Continuing with the story that led up to my hospitalization, this is the last post in this series of posts, even post 25 through post 30. On my drive to Salt Lake City Temple, I decided I would approach a security guard and tell him my plan. I would then go to the temple entrance and present my temple recommend showing I was worthy to be there, even though I was not dressed in my Sunday best. Then I would turn around and go to the church office building to visit with general authority or set up a time to meet with one. Using the number and passcode I had obtained earlier that day from the Missionary Training Center president, I followed through with my plan, but ran into some hiccups. First, the security guard said, you seem like a wise young man. Then he advised me to not go through with my plan, to which I didn't see any harm, and I proceeded with my plan. After leaving the temple check-in, I ran into a sister missionary I knew from college. What seemed like out of the blue, she said, you should go home and take your medicine. Flabbergasted, I pointed at her name badge and said, you don't have to be a missionary to represent the Lord. I bid her adieu in a hurry to catch the office building before it got too late. As I was leaving the temple grounds, a different security guard approached me and asked if he could ask me some questions. I accepted his offer. He asked what I was doing there. I shared my plan with him. He then advised me not to proceed and said they are leaving soon anyway. I then wanted to bolt to catch them before they left. And he asked me, would you like to see the prophet? Wow, now he's talking. I thought, this is amazing, straight to the top. Then I said, yes, but is that possible? He said, yes, but first we need to pray. I said, okay, and he said, we need to pray over here on the grass. So we walked over closer to the temple and he said, here is good. I then took a knee and before I could utter a sentence, I had two officers picking me up, one under each armpit, baffled and confused. I asked the names of the officers as they carried me off the temple square grounds, I might add. The first one said Smith. The second one said Joseph. They continued to carry me off the temple grounds. When out near the street, they threw me in some dirt, perhaps a flower bed area, handcuffed me and put me back in the in the back of the police car to this day i have a scar near my wrist from the handcuffs while in the police station i blinked out and only have a few memories of the following two weeks one that i don't remember was me spitting on people for example when i was brought before the judge who court ordered me to the state hospital a mask was put on me another that i do not remember is me refusing to take or excuse me that i do remember is me refusing to take my medicine. Because of this, I was pinned to the ground and shot, and a shot of medicine was put in my behind. I don't know if it was the next day or the following day, but I woke up after the medicine. I recognized where I was because when I came home from my mission five years earlier, I had visited my dad there, who was a patient. That concludes the story. So now some takeaways. First, I'm grateful for the policy and procedures of the church that led me to getting the help I needed. Second, I'm grateful for the police officers who escorted me off the grounds. Third, I'm grateful for the mask, staff, judge, doctors prescribing medicine, modern medicine, etc. I share this story hoping to encourage others who are experiencing mental ill health challenges to seek professional help. Jesus may still be the mark in your life, even if you take medicine. Furthermore, there is no need to go through an arrest. There is power in modern medicine, and you can fully function in society and in your faith with medicine. This does not mean you'll find the right dose in a few days, months, or possibly years. But as you continue to be open and seek help, others will rally with you to be made whole. I also share this for others who have loved ones who are struggling with mental ill issues. This isn't a matter of praying more or reading the scriptures more. I did those things regularly and strove to keep the commandments the best I could. Yet, 
in my fanaticism, I was arrested. Know this, mental health concerns are real and there is help to be offered in the form of professional help. To those struggling with mental health that justify breaking the word of wisdom in the form of self-medicating, there is no reason to justify breaking the commandments of the Lord. He, his commands are not suggestions. They are designed to bring you peace and happiness. Turn to the Lord by keeping his commandments and get professional assistance. Modern medicine has advanced much of late. For example, when my grandfather was in the state hospital, he went through electroshock therapy that was really rough on him, and he chose to self-medicate by breaking the word of wisdom. I understand the pain and possible embarrassment slash humility of having a mental illness, but there is no reason today that I can comprehend that gives you justification for breaking commands from the Lord. Yes, they still have electroshock therapy, but it is way more advanced and less traumatic, and they have more advanced ways to assist them, those in need. The bottom line is, the world is not out to get you. Others really want to help you. Receive the grace of the Lord through medical professionals and continue to strive to keep the commandments to the best of your ability. So, was it a plant gone awry? Yes, according to my dictates. But, thankfully, God's wisdom is greater than mine. He prepared a path to bring me closer to him and to get me the professional help I needed. I close with a huge thank you to those who dedicate their occupations to serving others, from policemen to judges to doctors, nurses, and staff. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you for joining me for a brief mental workout. Wise men do their mightiest works with their mental exertions. I encourage you to take time to ponder on the weightier matters of life and to govern your body with pure mental exertions, rather than having your body tell you what to do. You are welcome to connect with me further at my link in bio, where you can access my book, my social handles, my latest creative updates, and even request coaching services via email. I have been given much and am here to serve. Thank you and God bless you to be fruitful in doing your mightiest works. Good day.